Boom, sponsor yours truly. So today we're gonna to talk first about NVIDIA Lovelace GPUs have a node advantage over AMD RDNA 3 rumored to utilize a TSMC four nanometer process. This was basically written yesterday. It's on WCCF Tech. NVIDIA's Lovelace GPUs for next gen RTX 40 gaming graphics cards will have a node advantage over RDNA 3 from AMD as reported by Moore's Law is Dead. From what we know so far, NVIDIA was expected to utilize TSMC's five nanometer process node for their Ada Lovelace GPUs that power the next generation gaming graphics cards, AKA the RTX 40 series. It looks like the specific node has been revealed by Moore's Law is Dead in a recent, week, or a recent tweet. As per the latest rumor, the NVIDIA Ada Lovelace GPUs will be based on the TSMC 4 nanometer process. And he says, notice I didn't mention PCIe 5.0 in my Lovelace slides. Speaking of the number 4 though, NVIDIA Lovelace is indeed 4 nanometer. This is per that tweet. And then, of course, I think it was in reply to Copite on the PCIe Gen 4 thing. But... Yep, that's the same TSMC 4 nanometer process node that powers the Hopper GPUs for the data center HPC market. As for what we know about the TSMC 4 nanometer process node, it is a revision of their 5 nanometer process, not to be confused with 4 nanometer N4, which is a completely different node. The TSMC 4 nanometer process node is custom designed exclusively for NVIDIA and hosts a range of optimizations that allow for better power efficiency, performance, and minor boost to density versus the vanilla TSMC 5 nanometer node. The reasons why NVIDIA may have selected TSMC's 4 nanometer as a candidate for its next gen gaming GPU lineup are kind of obvious. The upcoming cards will be real power hungry and NVIDIA and the company is going to optimize them as much as they can by utilizing the 4 nanometer process node. AMD, on the other hand, will be utilizing a mix of TSMC 5 nanometer and 6 nanometer process nodes for its upcoming MCM and monolithic GPUs based on RDNA 3 graphics architecture. And while they don't bring the optimizations that 4 nanometer does, they will feature an MCM approach that is expected to be highly efficient. MCM for the uninitiated is going to be a multi-chip module design. Think chiplets from, of course, the Ryzen CPUs just in video card form. And I think it's very important to note that four nanometer, and four nanometer, while of course advancing the technology by decreasing the die size, that is relevant. I think it's really important to note that going to this kind of MCM approach from Radeon could actually end up garnering more performance at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, NVIDIA gets the better node while AMD delivers a better design approach. At the end of the day, these won't matter. I say at the end of the day, I swear I hadn't read this article yet. And then they say at the end of the day twice in a row. So we said <laughs> at, the, at the end of the day, <laughs> we have new GPUs coming out, right? Um, <laughs> These won't matter much to end users who only want to play their games on the best possible hardware they could get their hands on. Um, no, it will matter a lot because depending on which one ends up performing better, we'll know whether multi-chip module design was the way to go or whether going and decreasing the, the process node was the way to go. I have a feeling that AMD and Radeon will be in a position where pushing it for the multi-chip module design will put them ahead in future generations. Maybe not necessarily for the RX 7000 series, but I think that going that design approach will give them more to work with in the future. That's what I think at least. Let me know what you guys think as well. So they do have, of course, the all three of the latest TIs basically kind of here. You got, you know, your 12 nanometer process on the 2080 TI, eight nanometer on the Samsung, and then four nanometer TSMC 
on the 4090. We've already kind of talked about their memory bandwidth. We are supposed to be getting 24 gigabit per second GDDR6X, which should get us a higher memory bandwidth up to 1152 gigabytes a second. Another important note here is they're reducing basically the power requirements for the memory side of things on Ada Lovelace. And I think that will be important as well. But unfortunately, because of the high power consumption and the new power design requirements in ATX 3.0, we're still not sure if this is really going to look good in a mining rig necessarily. We'll just have to wait and see. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.